Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Today's video is, well, pretty special to me. Uh, it has been more than 10 years that I've been working on this design, and today I have the pleasure of showing you construction of the first components for the full-size aircraft. So it's a bit of a hallmark moment, and we can all give a little cheer, yay, moving forward, and actually building the aircraft. So what you're looking at here is one of the winglets almost completed. Uh, it's missing the uh, balsa tip that uh, finishes it off. But other than that, it's essentially complete. And of course, it's minus covering. Now, at this point, I wanted to take a few moments to explain why you're seeing the type of construction that you're seeing. You're saying, hey, Raleigh, I thought this was supposed to be a big, fancy composite uh, foot launch sailplane. Well, it is composite. If you look close, there's some fiberglass and there's some carbon fiber and there's foam and there's spruce and there's plywood. So there's a wide variety of materials uh, in this winglet. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, the driving factor of the design is not just the material that it's made of, but that it have the appropriate strength to weight ratio, that it be durable and um, be appropriate for its application. Uh, in this particular case, I've chosen to build the winglets much like you would a very large model airplane. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Uh, I can achieve a very high strength to weight ratio this way. Um, it's actually less expensive than building the winglets uh, entirely out of composites. It is uh, actually lighter by about, oh, probably a pound per winglet and uh, it is amenable to most home builders. Uh, no molds are required. Uh, a lot of home builders have background building model airplanes, so this is something that they can uh, start with, uh, get their teeth into the project, and build some real components. And the final factor is uh, durability. Now, if I build uh, the entire glider to be as durable as, say, your standard hang glider, it's gonna be really heavy. 150 pounds, 170 pounds. So I'm building this aircraft so that it's strong enough for all of the flight loads and that it is reasonably durable. Now, in this particular case, I've decided to make the winglets this way so that they're easily replaceable. Uh, people, if they get damaged, people can just build another one. Maybe they have a spare on hand, both winglets are the same. Um, they can go about this a variety of ways. Easy to repair, it's gonna be covered with monocoat, so you get a tear in it, just put some plastic tape over it, you're good to go. Uh, so there are a variety of factors that drive this design, and the bottom line is this gives a better strength to weight ratio, it's lower in cost, and it's easier to repair and or replace. Uh, you have to keep in mind that the winglets stick up from the wing, and if anything's gonna get bumped into and broken, it'd be the winglets. So uh, that's why you're seeing the construction that you're seeing here. Uh, for the future, maybe some other components, maybe some of the components of the winglet might be different. I don't know, but for now, for the baseline prototype, uh, this is it. And let's proceed with the actual construction of this component. In this next photo, what I want to show you is uh, basically two things. Number one, how I do my uh, construction. I use these rough templates that I draw up by hand. Nothing fancy here. Uh, I could do a bunch of 3D modeling, but what's the point? This is really a giant model airplane. Might as well build it like one. So I have some rough sketches, uh, full scale, and these provide me templates and guides for how I'm going to uh, build the uh, various components. So what you're looking at here, of course, is the layout for the winglet that you just saw. And uh, at the bottom of the winglet drawing, you'll see what I call the winglet mount. Uh, this is a uh, section that goes in the wing that provides the pivot point and the mount for the winglet itself. And then in the top photo, you're seeing a side, or the top drawing, you're seeing a side view of that uh, mount system for the winglet. And you're looking at also at uh, a full-size drawing of the tip of the wing. Uh, this wing is designed to come in six components. Uh, there's uh, three panels on each side. Uh, and well, actually, there's actually seven components. There's three panels on each side and a small center section. Now, where the tips attach is where the winglet 
uh, is going to go. Uh, and the winglet mount is about two inches wide, and it is essentially a piece that fits in between the mid-span panel and the tip panel. And that winglet mount will stay attached to the winglet at all times, uh, except for if you need maintenance, but uh, for normal transportation, it just stays attached. And when the tip of the wing gets put on, uh, that secures the mount for the winglet in place. Uh, you should also, I should also point out here that I suspect I'm going to build the tips of the wing, which are about four and a half feet long, uh, using the same methodology that I use for the winglets, just slightly uh more robust materials. I'm probably going to build two different ones. I'm going to build one with a plywood sheeting leading edge, and I'm going to build the other one with a composite leading edge, and we'll see how they uh, hold up and perform. In this photo, I'm showing uh, the blanks for the root ribs or the base ribs of the winglet. Uh, it is uh, the core material is quarter inch thick balsa and the face sheets are 5.6 ounce carbon fiber uh, and epoxy laminates them onto the balsa. Uh, you could use uh, divinacel foam, the six pound foam would be nice. I chose balsa because the grain in the balsa gives it a little bit more stiffness and the root rib uh, itself needs to be very stiff in bending uh, to resist the shrinkage of the covering material that's going to be put on. So I made out these two blanks and then I stack them up with a little bit of double sticky tape and a template and I cut them and sand them out uh, together as a pair so that the two winglets match. Here you can see the tip ribs uh, already cut out. Uh, these are uh, similar to the uh, root ribs. They are eighth inch thick balsa with carbon fiber on either side. The carbon fiber is just a uh, two ounce cloth on these. Now these tip ribs could be cut out of plywood. They could be cut out of uh, basswood. Uh, they could be cut out of uh, high density balsa. Uh, they could be just about anything because the balsa tip on the winglet itself provides uh, sufficient resistance to uh, shrinkage of the covering material. Uh, I did them this way just because I happen to have a little panel laying around of balsa and carbon fiber and I just whack the ribs out of that. Now you see that the ribs have been cut for the spars. Uh, they haven't been cut on the diagonal yet. They're just the baseline uh, eighth by quarter I think is what it was or half half by quarter and I have the front end in a v-notch. Uh, I was thinking I was going to use square spruce or balsa material for the leading edge but if you've been following you know that we actually have uh, carbon fiber tubing for the leading edge so these got modified uh, as I built the winglet. This next uh, picture shows the two balsa tips that are going to uh, go on the uh, top of each winglet and I've just uh, positioned the tip ribs up against these balsa blocks to ensure that I have uh, sufficient material and that they're properly shaped. And after the uh, balsa blocks are installed on the winglets, then I uh, mark them out and do final shaping on them. I've done preliminary shaping here uh, based on the uh, drawings. In this photo, you can see the uh, two ribs that I cut out of the blanks that I showed earlier. These are the root ribs or the base rib for the winglets. Uh, you can see here they've had a hole drilled through them. I drilled both of them at the same time stacked up. Uh, that hole is for the shaft that the winglet pivots on. The shaft is actually permanently mounted in the winglet and it pivots in a bushing that's mounted inside of the uh, winglet mount itself. And uh, this has been notched out for the spars and the leading edge, much like the tip ribs. And what's not shown here is a quarter inch diameter hole that's two inches forward of this uh, larger hole. And that small hole is drilled later and it's for the uh, little quarter inch diameter pultruded fiberglass rod. It becomes a little pin. It's a stop pin that limits the travel of the winglet, both inboard and outboard, uh, so that it doesn't spin all the way around backward. Here we see the remainder of the ribs that have been uh, cut and sanded out of uh, half inch thick dow styrofoam. Uh, I find this material is uh, nice and lightweight. It's very strong for its weight. It only weighs two pounds per cubic foot and it shapes easily, has a nice smooth density to it. and doesn't soak up too much excess uh, adhesive. I do them in pairs. Uh, 
cut blanks, stack them up. I use a little double face tape to hold the template in place and I do a rough cut with a razor blade and then I go on my disc sander and uh, shape them right to the template and then I use a little razor blade to notch out for the spars and the leading edge. So essentially what you've seen in this series of photos is that I like to assemble a kit for the winglets. I cut out all the ribs, I create uh, trailing edges which you saw in another video. I've pre-shaped uh, the wing tips and you know that I have the leading edge tubing uh, if you watch my other videos. So we have all the components that we need to assemble the winglets and assembly goes much faster if you make all the parts first, build yourself a little kit and then assemble the kit. Here you can see the uh, midway point of the process of making uh, the carbon fiber bushings for the uh, winglet shaft. Uh, you see in the background a half inch diameter uh, pultruded fiberglass piece of tubing and I have uh, applied the release material to that uh, same way that I do uh, all of my composite tubing. You watch my other videos and find out how to make them. You see enough material here to do about three or four wraps on that tube. Uh, this is 5.6 ounce carbon fiber uh, and of course epoxy resin. And then I have my uh, bleeder cloth there and my shrink wrap. So I'm going to just simply roll this onto that tube and uh, cure it in the normal way. And once it's removed, I will have a bushing that has just the right amount of clearance from the shaft. The release material that's applied to the tubing provides about 10 thousandths of an inch clearance and that is just right uh, to make good bushings for that uh, shaft. After the uh, carbon fiber was cured and removed from the uh, mandrel, uh, I cut off four inch, well, slightly longer than four inch long pieces. Uh, that'll be the bushings that go inside the winglet mount. Here you can see one piece uh, that I've cut off set on the drawing in the position uh, where it will be in the winglet mount. As you can see, the uh, shaft that the winglet rotates on uh, it sits right at the trailing edge of the wing. Uh, the tubing uh, came out at uh, four tenths of an ounce per foot, so really light, uh, great bushing material. The carbon fiber, as it wears a little bit, you get a little bit of graphite dust in there and it's automatically lubricated. So uh, should last a lifetime, uh, probably last a lot longer than the glider. Now that I have all my pieces in place uh, or in hand, I have attached the uh, template, uh, building template to my workbench. I use a little bit of double face tape for that. The surface of that template I cover with a uh, removable clear uh, shelf paper. Uh, from the contact folks and get it in a home center and that prevents the glue from sticking. The other handy reason for doing that is uh, that plastic coating over the drawing, uh, I don't bother with little mixing cups for the five minute epoxy. I just squirt it out on the uh, some corner of the drawing that's out of the way and I mix it right on the plastic covering over the drawing and uh, apply it to the parts. So by the time I get done building two winglets, uh, the whole thing's covered in glue and it doesn't matter because I'm going to throw it away anyway. Here I'm doing a little bit of inventory, uh, make sure I get all my bits and pieces in place and you see them laid out in their general positions on the drawing. Here I'm showing the critical jigging uh, for uh, the winglet itself. Uh, it Everything has to be jigged up so that it's vertical, square, and there's no twist in the winglet. So to accomplish that, I've uh, created a couple of ramps out of foam core board, uh, one to hold the trailing edge and one to hold the spar uh, at the root end, uh, because the uh, that is the full thickness of the winglet, uh, the ramp goes down to zero, and then it ramps up to the tip to accommodate the taper that's in the winglet, so that the center line of each rib uh, is aligned uh, with each other so that when all of the ribs get stacked up all of their center lines are aligned so that way the winglet will not be tilted outboard or tilted inboard and hopefully there won't be any twist in it. What you also see is a, a tapered ramp at the trailing edge. Uh, the At the root end uh, the height is set such that it accommodates half of the thickness of the rib and then out at the tip uh, we have to accommodate both the taper of the winglet and the smaller thickness of the tip rib uh, so that there is zero washout in the winglet. So we have a 
tapered winglet, no washout in it, and it is jigged up so that the ribs can, I can use a square to set the ribs perpendicular to the table and build everything square. Setting up this uh, jig is critical. Uh, I do not have it uh, bonded or attached anyway to the drawing. I use weights to hold it in place and tape. And that way, as I work along, I can remove them and put them back as needed as I work with the components. So uh, this kind of brings us to the end of section one. We're all set up and ready to build here. We have all our parts. We have the drawing set up on the table and we have it all jigged up and ready to build. I'm going to go ahead and post this video. I uh, hope you enjoy. I know my videos run long, so I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter. And please come back and watch segment two where I start the actual construction of the winglets. Thanks for coming. Bye.